Talking about Libya real quick before I wrap up here, uh, the UN envoy to Libya abruptly resigned this past week. His resignation will be effective December 10th. And I saw two reasons given for this uh, resignation. One, the official one was that they wanted to change the way the post was formatted. And so his resignation allows for that to happen. And then the second reason was there was a political issue between the envoy and I believe the leader of the UN, Antonio Guterres, and that led to his resignation. Honestly, the second explanation makes a hell of a lot more sense because we are now less than a month out from Libya's coming presidential elections. Uh, the, the date is December 24th. They didn't pick Christmas Eve. They pit uh, Libya's Independence Day for that vote. The UN has largely bat this vote. And so that's why I think it's fairly significant that the UN envoy is resigning, as I'm sure he had a pretty large role in putting this whole thing uh, together. Now, in total, 98 people uh, tried to run for uh, president of Libya, but the Electoral Commission uh, ruled out 25 of them, including the son of the former Libyan uh, dictator, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, his name is Saif al-Islam, and he is somebody we've, we've talked about on the show quite a bit uh, over the, you know, the past several years as the U.S. had an opportunity in 2011 to really just switch Gaddafi's. Well, you know, Salif al-Islam, his last name is Islam, not Gaddafi. But, you know, he was really ready to depose and take over for his father in 2011. But the U.S. decided instead to uh, go ahead with the, the NATO-led war there, depose Gaddafi, and predictably created a failed state, which continues to claim lives. Just this week, 10 migrants were found dead in a boat off of Libya's coast. This, this, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people have died trying to cross from Libya into Europe. It's absolutely insane the amount of uh, debt that this war has brought. And it, it all seemed preventable and everything. Uh, but it, there, there did seem to be some popular encouragement for Saif al-Islam uh, in his candidacy. However, him being ruled out makes me wonder how legitimate these elections will be viewed overall. Also, Another major name and candidate is Khalifa Haftar, who has been the military man in control of most of eastern Libya for the past decade, probably eight or nine, eight years now. I don't think he came to Libya right in 2011 after Gaddafi was uh, deposed, but he has controlled a huge chunk of Libya uh, with his military rule and is pretty uh, credibly accused and his forces are credibly accused of committing war crimes. And so if, uh, if you're outlawing Saif al-Islam for, you know, potential crimes that he committed while his father was, uh, in charge of Libya, like 10 plus years ago, it, it seems like you will also have to address anybody who's been involved in crimes in Libya. And I mean, we're talking about millions of deaths and rapes in the past 10 years. Uh, so sh who know? I'm sure anybody who's actually running for president, uh, most of them are, you know, with with like power, authority, money, followers, and stuff, ha are are guilty of committing crimes. And uh, it seems maybe a little bit arbitrary to rule out uh, Saif al Islam. Anyways, my major concern is that this will undermine the um what what would be the for the libyans not for the international community but for the libyans if they don't have the people that they want running in the presidential election they might feel illegitimate to them and not actually be something that brings about uh, a peace stability an acceptable government but rather would bring about a situation uh, of you know more chaos and, and fighting and uh you know maybe you know fracturing of, of different divisions and stuff like that you know, uh, elections could be a, a good thing and a good way to pick a leader, maybe, uh, but it, it doesn't really work if, the, you know, the, the country is broken and, and has far more problems than just not being able to elect a leader. And, and it seems like Libya has still far more problems. Now, the UN Security Council is threatening sanctions against anybody uh, who meddles in the election. I'm sure everybody's going to meddle in the election anyways. And since, you know, everybody has a benefactor on the UN Security Council, that's a, a per member state, whether it's Russia, the U.S., China, France, the U.K., uh, my, my guess is that no sanctions actually come. 
even if uh, one country does try to influence the election quite a bit. 